Hello, it's Nikki. Welcome to another Character Quest video. Uh, if you are new to my channel or new to these videos, welcome, hi, hello. We are gonna be doing a pretty in-depth look at these uh, characters. So Jean is today's subject under the microscope. Let me just present you a table of contents. We'll be doing the story quest. We will be watching demos and trailers. So anything released about the character by Hoyo, we will be watching. Then we will be going straight into lore and voice lines. This includes teapot dialogue, okay we are thorough on this channel next we have a theory category um this will be a little more prevalent than it was in the clee video i did before because gene is connected to a lot of monstat history and there's lots of lore there and lots of characters that she's related to either by blood or just by association so We'll be talking a bit about that, but it'll mostly be looped in with the lore and voice lines bit. And then last, but certainly not least, is the character log. This is something that's a staple on this channel. This is a time in the video where I talk about my personal thoughts on a character, their growth or lack of growth, or where I think they'll be going in the story moving forward. Um, if they have an arc, I comment on that. And uh, overall, just kind of give my opinion on the character. I will see you guys at the end, enjoy. Is something wrong? Okay. Um, I'm her loyal slave? What the fuck? Um, we've met, but I guess we can be nice. Okay。This is true. Oh lord, okay. <laughs> By the way, if I sound congested, it's because um, I'm a little sick right now. <laughs> so please forgive me if I sound kind of kind of froggy today. Because my my nose is all stuffed up. <laughs> I will try also not to like breathe heavily into the microphone because I can't breathe through my nose. <laughs> but let's go see what Charles has to say. Oh Lord, I still can't get over his beard. It needs so much work. We're here to Why you gotta be rude? Tax return forms. Taxes exist in this world? No! <laughs> no! Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, good to know he's a savvy businessman, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, why is Jean doing this? Isn't there uh, any subservient knights that can handle this? Why does she personally go over the accounts? Okay. Okay. Dang! He just came out and said it too. <laughs> oh my god. Well. Yeah, I agree actually with on that one. I don't think Jean would. I don't think Jean is a drinker. Maybe getting her like a nice fruity drink or something. 
like a smoothie. Oh my god, I want a smoothie. <laughs> Not me projecting. Okay. I can't believe she does the tax forms. That's insane. She's a um, grandmaster and an accountant. Who knows what else she takes on? She does errands for the local restaurant. Clearing hill trail towers and stuff. <laughs> Where am I going? Better not come across fucking auto. Oh my god. <laughs> you mean Diona? Isn't that the character? <laughs> it was a joke, okay? Um, I would actually, in fact, not love to help. You're not gonna bother Jean with this, are you? Girl. There are, I'm sure, so many other people you could talk to before Jean about your cat. Aren't there knights standing guard right here? Can't you just ask them? Good God. No, I would have not mentioned that shit at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. Poor Jean. <laughs> Oh, and she's coughing. Great. Girl, same. We're both sick. Yeah, let's just be polite. She had to sit down? Oh no. Okay. No, 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 no. We need to delegate. This is stupid. This is dumb. There is absolutely no reason why she needs to be doing all that shit. Like, none. She has an entire force of knights. Cathedral. Is that where like the hospital stuff like is? Oh, Barbara. Because all that ever does is fuck you over. You know, you're just me you're just messing yourself up at that point. You do care about Jean. What? Bird are good. Yeah, this is weird. What's, what's, what, what's all that? I am. I would say that we're overqualified to be doing this shit. Let's get Otto to do it. <laughs> Don't we wait? Do we rank higher than him? I mean, not me trying to abuse my power, but like, can we get Otto to do it? <laughs> I'd like to see him scrambling up a tree to get Margaret's cat. That would bring me joy. <laughs> uh. 
Kai is already looking at him. I know Otto's just to the right of us, isn't he? <laughs> Kai is waiting. He knows. <laughs> mm. Otto. <laughs> okay. Oh, whoops. It never ceases to amaze me that I could be running or going in any direction and the characters will just, like spider monkeys, stick to vertical objects. <laughs> yeah, Kai even thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, Kaya! Oh, he's making me lose my voice. Oh. <clears throat> Hi. Oh my goodness. It's been so long. Oh, Oh, he's talking about Kishidan. Oh, okay. Maybe he just really respects her. Okay. <laughs> of course, butter us up a little bit just to ask us to do something else. Alright. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to do something else. Oh, fantastic. Was it Otto? <laughs> Please tell me it was Otto. Or Huffman. Oh. Oh, okay. That's what are you going to be doing? <laughs> No, me syncing up with Paimon again. <laughs> to, to prepare. <laughs> Kaya, alright. Prepare, wait. Prepare what? Or is he just... Okay, bye. <laughs> Good thing you're cute. All right, what does Miss Ma'am have to say? Menti! Ooh, <laughs> ow, that hurt my throat. Oh my goodness, Venti. I mean, I assume. <sighs> what do you need? You're an Archon! What do you need, Venti? <laughs> oh. How did you manage to let that happen? It's a cat! It's a cat, Venti. <laughs> Little Prince is a cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As a cat, uh, cat mom myself, I feel called out. Barbados, like that. Uh, Paimon. Haha, a beautiful day. Kohon. First of all, Little Prince will find you. Sorry. Today, the schedule is already in place. <laughs> to play with. Yeah. Cats will play with the randomest shit, I swear to God. Oh. I mean, that lines up. Okay. 
何かしら風元素の痕跡が残ってると思うぞお願いねリトルプリンスは黒猫よそう I have a black hat この魚はリトルプリンスの大好物だから持っていく<笑>、okay. Wow, it's cool that Venti is making little. I like that,、um, you know, all the Mondstadt celebrities are making appearances in this quest. That's fun. We got Kaya, we got Venti. I hope to God Deluke shows up. I don't know how on earth he would show up in this quest, but I hope he does. Oh, what? Oh, I'm a. Oh, wait. What just happened? Oh, no, no, no. I am a master at this. Did that pupper just come running up to me? Oh, hi, Bubby. <laughs> you gonna help me catch the cat? <laughs> Um, I'm a master at catching cats. I do it all the time with my cat. Come here. Hey. Uh, okay. Um, that was very easy. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I love black cats. Little Prince, you have to come back. Where is he? I'm looking for him. <laughs> Little Prince, what does your miss the night at your day? Oh, you're starting to say, I'm not sure. 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 What happened?、Huh? He looks so concerned. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Is he sick too? Oh, cat allergy. <laughs> he has a cat allergy. <laughs> An archon has a, has a cat allergy. <laughs> Why? How? <laughs> Aren't you omnipresent or something? Or is it your mortal form that has a cat allergy? <laughs> How bizarre. <laughs> Cover your mouth. Get you a tissue or something. Okay. Oh, that's cute. I'm glad Venti did a little cameo. Well, we're going to Charles. Maybe.、Um, So、Luke will show up or something. I'm this is my hopium. Oh, Lisa, okay, not to Luke, but Lisa. I'll take it. Actually, it would it makes sense that she would. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. My voice <clears throat> it makes sense that she would be involved in the paperwork accounting stuff as a librarian. <laughs> I was like, all right, see ya. <laughs> What? 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 That's so weird. Why did he phrase it this way? Wait, where's she going? Well, it's cool how they kind of walk off into places. Oh, I've marked a little challenge I haven't done yet. <laughs> Transport balloon. Okay, I'll have to do this challenge later. I'm not doing it right now. Um, 
There's only one dude over here? Oh. Okay. Um, that's not what I meant to do. なんか行くことワイナリーで勤めてきてもう少し来るのが遅れ。安心しろ。ヒロちゃん。ヒロちゃんの相手だけに集中するなよ。ステイインタクト。荷物の安全が最優先だ。オッケー。ナ、それじ
I mean, she was feeling faint, so yeah, I don't know about trekking through nature. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. That was pretty. about the knights. I can't speak for them, but us you can. She was human too. You know, like, I don't think she was perfect. You're doing great. ダンディライオン騎士として、セピロス騎士団を作り上げ、モンドを守ってきた。ダンディライオン騎士って、ジンのことじゃないのか I mean, that's why you're worthy of them. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with these red abyss mages, dude? <laughs> oh, she was No, not again. <laughs> Uh, it could be a trap. We can handle it. Oh. Or we can just borrow one of Klee's bones. <laughs> okay, well, I, I don't understand why. What is it with these red abyss mages and running off? I don't get it. Oh, Jean's running with us. Oh, I love it. Most of the time when companions accompany us, we just hear their dialogue and we have to imagine they're with us, but she's oh actually God. running with us. That's so cool. Okay, so we're going to be chasing him down in the domain. Oh! You little bitch! <laughs> No, you're fine. Kaya's fur uh, cape thing just got a little singe, that's all. He's okay. Oh! Oh, you know what? That's kind of cool how... I think I just wasted that, but I just wanted to see what it did. Ooh, so it's like a healing thingy. All right. <laughs> that was so fun. Very satisfying. Try to hit the monsters into the water. Oops. <laughs> I was away from the water. 
Okay, well, I didn't hit them into the water. I think I missed the point. <laughs> but I, her moveset is really aggressive. Like, she's very... Her stances are very aggressive. Like, Kaya feels very waltzy. Like, he's playing with his food kind of a vibe. But with Jean, it's very... I mean, I guess it matches her personality. It's, like, very straightforward. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> Kaya, if you would. Things, baby. Alright. <gasps> They're sleeping! Ooh. Oops. I don't know how to use that properly. Ooh. I like how there's like dandelions and stuff floating around. That's really cute. I'm sure everyone who's a Jean main is screaming at me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like how she essentially has like an uppercut, like when you hold her, like her, um, like strong attack. I love it. It's like an uppercut with the sword. It's so satisfying. All right, there's this the, the little fucker, mirror. Ooh, shit, that shredded his shield almost instantly. I'm noticing that she's healing. <laughs> nice uppercut, that's so satisfying. <laughs> Upset with me. What, what? What is with uh, Jean and Barbara? They seem to have some sort of relationship. Danzo,やっと帰ってきてくれました。すわん、待っていてくれたのか？ああ、いえ、坂間のエンジェルズシアの方で大したことではないのですが、ああ、いえ、坂間のエンジェルズシアの方で大したことではないのですが、ああ、
朝飯前よじゃあマーガレットさんの猫の件は<笑>猫探しまで覚えてるのか<笑>リトルプリンスは旅人が捕まえてくれたよついでに僕の星鉄のゲームも返してもらっただから今日は仕事のことを忘れて You know what's really endearing is that Venti is here みんなと共に仕事ができて私は幸せだ You know, he's an archon, he doesn't need to, but he's here Anyway パーティーの用意も大変だっただろうみんなは力がたまっただろう実はな、主催者は旅人だったんだぜ。え、ちょっと。Okay, no, I wasn't. I didn't know any of this was happening. も旅人が用意してくれてな。Okay, inadvertently though. I did, but inadvertently though. 怪の顔も謙虚なふりもしなくていいぜ。もちろん、ディルックの旦那のおかげでもある。<laughs> oh, he secretly cares though, so this is kind of on brand for him. <laughs> this is for Jean though, it's not an event for the knights. That's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is cute. I have the biggest smile on my face right now. Oh, oh my gosh, you get to talk to them? <laughs> okay. No, I don't care. Hush. Wait. <laughs> Let me talk to Deluke. Okay, she's upstairs. I got it. Let me talk with the Luke. Hi. Why haven't you come home yet? What? Attempt at humor, my scrunkly. <laughs> it's just not normal. You know why it's not normal, though. You know he's an archon. <laughs> Do you have extra dialogue? Okay, no. Just double checking. Sometimes they slip in extra stuff. Okay. Why haven't you come home to me yet, Zaluk? Oh, everyone is staring at me. <laughs> this is uncomfortable. Okay, I'll leave the bar now. I've gotten bashful. Let me out. <sighs> okay, let's have a sit and talk to Venti. See what Venti has to say. But first, let, uh, let me get a picture because this is really cute. Okay, that wasn't a great picture, but whatever. <laughs> お酒はやっぱり噂通り美味しいね。ベンティ。お酒は普段の僕じゃいっぱいも買えないからね。せっかくのチャンスだし、もう一杯。金魚野郎のお酒の執念。あ、君たちいたんだね。このお酔っ払
俺たちとジンは付き合いが長いだろう。Okay. お互いのことをよく知っているほど、陰でパーティーの準備をしてたなんてバレると恥ずかしい。I mean, not always, but does that mean you felt bashful? だからお前の手柄ってことにさせてもらった。Oh! <laughs> He was shy? <laughs> My baby! He was shy? Hey, leave him alone. It's okay. Oh. He's laughing through the pain. <laughs> It's okay. Oh, that's so endearing. He was shy. Okay, what does Amber have to say? Uh, okay. Yes. What the? Okay, sorry. I, I, I want to get up to Jean. Um, bright red. Tomatoes? No. Chilies? What the heck? <laughs> what? Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Crap. What the heck? Chili pepper? Why would you put that in a drink? As someone with a sweet tooth, that sounds abhorrent. What? Lisa? Alone? Now's your chance? Lisa! No. No. Cut it out. Okay. These stairs are steep. God. Wait, I don't see her. Where'd she go? Uh, okay. Am I? Did I miss something? Didn't she say upstairs? Wait, it won't let me leave. Is this a. Oh. <laughs> Is there like a balcony terrace or something? It's suddenly daytime. ちょっと外の空気を吸いに来ただけだ。ジン、なんか思い詰めてるみたいだな。旅人、もう一度礼を言う。ああ、たとえそうだとしても。ビオネス。みんなと一緒にいると、不思議と元気になれる。I'm glad. ダンディライオン騎士の方が、シガキシはバネッサ様がモンドのためにジユーの風が進むべき道を導いてくれる。今後も我々と共にあってくれ。That's the eldest daughter of House Gunhilder. House Gunhilder. The young okay. acting grandmaster had become a skilled swordsman through hard work, and works harder still for the sake of the knights. Self-sacrifice, after all, is the Dandelion Knight's path. As the wind She's self-sacrificing, all right. So too shall I continue to fight. Jean has excellent crowd control and support abilities, and can act in concert with others to suppress the enemy. 
Jean's elemental burst can instantly restore her health and benefit her allies as well, making her the pillar of any team. Even when cooking, Jean is always concerned with helping others and can accidentally make extra helpings. <laughs> when Jean cooks a restorative dish perfectly, she has a chance to create two of them. All the better to face the battles ahead. Very cool. Jean can perform up to five consecutive normal attacks, dealing physical damage to enemies. Yeah, her stance, her the attack, attack stance is so aggressive. It's so cool. And a wind-infused thrust that deals high physical damage. <laughs> yeah, and the uppercut. Enemies. Launched enemies will fall slowly for a short time, allowing Jean to control the flow of battle and give her teammates a chance to perform follow-up attacks more safely. Oh, okay. Unlocking the talent Wind Companion gives Jean's normal attacks a chance to heal all party members on hit. This healing scales with Jean's attack. So power. like Noel a little Tapping bit. Tapping her elemental skill Gale Blade causes Jean to gather formless wind on her sword and unleash a small storm. Launching I'm pretty sure I was misusing Jean's this. Aiming, dealing animo damage. Holding Gale Blade constantly consumes Jean's stamina. Pulling oh, you can. Enemies oh, in front of her, I. And allowing okay. her to adjust the direction <laughs> in which she wishes to launch them, okay. dealing animo damage. Okay, I enemies never did this. By Gale Blade will in the quest. Clumped together when they fall, making follow-up attacks easier. All right. Gale Blade is a very flexible ability. This is what it wanted me to do. It wanted me to put the dudes in the water. Its effects. All right. <laughs> Noted. Wait, hear me. Calling upon the wind's protection, Jean creates a dandelion field, knocking nearby enemies back and dealing animal damage. The field also quickly heals nearby allies and all party members. This healing scales with Jean's attack power. The dandelion field continuously heals characters within it, infusing them with anima, while dealing animo damage to enemies who enter or leave the field. Oh! Once the talent Let the Wind Lead is unlocked, using Dandelion Field will regenerate some additional elemental energy. Jean can help her team take charge, aid in their attacks, and do great damage through skillful use of her abilities. A well-rounded fighter indeed. Look at that lunge. All in heals, too, Start baby. The battle by using her elemental skill. I approve. Mop up nearby enemy groups and build elemental energy. Then use her charged attack to disrupt their movements, allowing your party members to switch in, attack, and deal damage. When your party members have taken significant damage, use her elemental burst at the opportune moment to repel enemies and regenerate your team's health before beginning the next round of attacks to finish the fight. Very Though cool. Jean may lack experience. Mondstadt has only prospered since she assumed Varka's great responsibilities. Even I, who has seen countless people, must respect Wait, her desire even I. to always defend Mondstadt. But unlike most who bear great burdens, this young knight has remained as tenacious as ever. How was her will molded, and what sustains her edge such that it never wears down? If fate wills it, I will find Wait, the answer to Wait, who's narrating this? In the comments, can you tell me? Okay, so this is the um, Master Jean, trailer ask for, some time off for the event. Because she doesn't have a... Oh, speaking of which, I still have a promise to keep to Klee. Wait, she has a different Those outfit. Fish won't blast themselves. Oh! What? I got a terrible, terrible letter and need to go to a certain place. Dodoko is very important to me. I will Wee. lose to Dodoko. Wow, this is beautiful. Where are these? It has something of the unknown about it and seems to have its fair share of dangers. And yet, the mystery is all part of its beauty. Hmm. I need to bring Jumpy Gumpties, Dodo Go, and myself. Let's go! Okay, so this seems to be an event um, that maybe introduced sailing. So this came out before Inazuma. This is like uh, 1 1.0, one of the 1.0 events, I think. Yeah, 1.6.
I will be watching that, by the way. Wicked girl of flame, you have finally arrived. I've waited far too long. You dare face me. What the heck? Oh, such courage is admirable, but it is now meaningless because... Ooh. You know what? I bet this was really hype because Inazuma hadn't come out yet. And this is an Inazuma boss and people were probably excited to see it. I hate this guy. <laughs> when the vision bearer dies, the light in their vision will fade away. Organizing the clash is my way of uncovering hidden talents, and hopefully this time, getting a vision to glow again. Oh, Your this is from... Is new to the clash, but he has quickly become the dark horse of the tournament. The vision is missing. The sounds of nature turn into a clamor of noise. I wonder if this is weapons. when they first introduced Kazuha. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. The birds come! Set. Supposing each of the seven Archons had their criteria for granting visions to living beings, then does the current Electro Archon now doubt these criteria, or even the act in and of itself? There will come a day when I too shall wish to understand the answer. I have no idea who's talking. Her. The voyage to Inazuma is <laughs> I think it's Kaza. Will be plagued by a perpetual tempest. The I don't recognize the part of your journey that I would recognize his Japanese storm. voice though. May well, proved to be the most arduous. Okay, so this is some sort of um, outfit trailer. There isn't much on Jean, so I'm just kind of watching whatever's available. My special summer performance is about to begin. Okay, so I don't think there's going to be any lore in this, but we'll just watch it. <laughs> A little duck purse, it's cute. I'm assuming this was in conjunction a with the I do hope I don't get it dirty. Uh the event. She has a lot of roses. Like Lisa's. Very pretty. All right, Jean Gunhilder. Ooh. Older sister of Barbara, descendant of the prestigious Gunhilder clan. Ooh, wait. Let's look at this. Let's look at this real quick. The Gunhilder clan, also known as House Gunhilder, is one of the prominent families um, in Mondstadt. Alongside the Ragnavinder clan, the Emun something clan, and the Lawrence clan. Okay, let's check out Deluke's clan. The Ragnavinder family is an influential and affluent noble house. Okay, name is derived from Don Knight Ragnavinder, who participated in Vanessa's rebellion 1,000 years ago alongside the Gunhilder clan. Two known noble families that were not exiled during the fall of the aristocracy. Okay, so this is from the manga. You know what? I'm not going to read through this because Deluc is going to get his own video and we will go through his family's history in his video. So back to the Gunhilder clan. All right, let's read up on this. Uh, the Gunhilder clan was formed long before its namesake. However, little is known about their history prior to her rise as clan leader. All that is known is that they took refuge from Andreas's blizzards inside Decabrian city, but left after growing disillusioned with the Archon's rule. The Gunhilder clan had difficulty surviving in the blizzards outside the city, and they cried out for help, which a wind spirit heard. Gaining power from the clan's faith, the wind spirit was able to give them a small shelter. When her father died, Gunhilder took the role as leader of the clan and became the first priestess, protecting the clan with the power bestowed on her by the wind spirit. When Barbados challenged Decabrian, Gunhilder led her clan to fight alongside, and when he succeeded, she decorated the new Animo Archon with laurels. Wow. Okay. Early aristocratic period. 
The oath that the ancient Mondstadt inhabitants took when Barbados reformed the land and founded new Mondstadt features the Gunhilder clan saying, and was either created by Gunhilder or, at the very least, the clan remembered the oath better than the other clans. Swordsmanship, becoming mandatory for nobles, likely originated from the Gunhilder clan's culture of always being ready to protect Mondstadt. During that time that the people of Mondstadt worshipped the gods of Animo and time together, the Gunhilder clan would enact the defense of Mondstadt with prop weapons. Oh. Okay. Huh. Late aristocratic period, the Gunhilder clan remained a prominent clan throughout the aristocracy, but they stayed true to their oath to protect Mondstadt and did what they could to help the people. During Vanessa's rebellion, the Gunhilder clan sided with the people and were spared from exile unlike the rest of the aristocracy. The Gunhilder clan continues to keep their oath to protect Mondstadt, with many knights and clergy members coming from that clan. Ah. Wow. Okay, so Jean is like from an old, old family. Holy shit. Okay. 2,600 years ago, Gunhilder's father is the clan's namesake. Okay. Unknown. Eckhard Gunhilder, historian and author. Ooh. Uh, Seamus Pegg and Frederica Gunhilder. Oh, okay. Wait. Are these their parents? Let's see. Frederica Gunhilder is Jean and Barbara's mother and a member of Mondstadt's Gunhilder clan. Oh. Oh, okay, they're still alive. Frederica is a member of the Gunhilder clan, Mondstadt's oldest family of knights and a proud, venerable lineage. She met and fell in love with Seamus Pegg, a famous former adventurer turned the Church of Favonius's Cardinal of Daybreak. They married and had two daughters together, Jean and Barbara. In time, a rift formed in their marriage and the two parted ways. Jean stayed with Frederica while Barbara was raised by their father. Oh, fascinating, okay. Frederica raised Jean to be the successor of the Gunhilder clan, training her in the ways a knight must conduct themselves and the knowledge and skills they must have, such as swordsmanship, history, and ballads. While Jean was a girl, her mother always celebrated her birthday with her. Instead of the usual party and birthday cake, Frederica would take her to a simple trip to Windrise. Oh, wow. Which made her daughter unused to the idea of a birthday banquet as an adult. Oh, so that's probably why Jean was like extra weird <laughs> about the uh, the celebration and the party and stuff. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, let's look at um, Seamus, though. Oh, wait. Okay, so he was in the manga, I believe. Uh, Seamus Pegg is the seneschal of the Church of Favonius and one of the leaders of Mondstadt. He is also known by the title Cardinal of Daybreak. He is the father of Jean and Barbara. He has only ever appeared in the manga, which is set prior to the game's events, and is mentioned a few times in the game. Currently, he is accompanying Grandmaster Varka's expedition. Ah. Seamus Pegg was once an adventurer, famed throughout Tevat. When he came to Mondstadt, he started anew with the Church of Favonius and later rose to the position of Seneschal. He fell in love with Frederica Gunhilder of the prestigious Gunhilder clan. They married and had two daughters, Jean and Barbara. The two eventually separated and Barbara stayed with him. Despite their separation, he still kept Frederica's set of clothes as the Alder Knight, Gunhilder's legacy. What? Okay, hold on. Let's look at this. <laughs> the hole gets deeper. Wow. Uh, big sis, these clothes are yours, right? I found them while uh, sorting through things. Okay, so... Oh, this is one of her outfits. Oh, this is, I think, what we... Okay, okay, okay. I see. I see. Okay. Um, uh, okay, yours. I found them while sorting things on the room. The folded ceremonial clothes in Barbara's hands had the knight's crest on it, which shone with a golden light as it caught the sun's rays. It looked familiar, true, but Jean was very sure that she had never owned such a set of clothes before. Come to think of it, the uniform she usually wore was hand-sewn by her mother. Wait, could that be yours, mother? Frederica smiled as her daughter asked this question, a rare sight to see on her face. Uh, it's been so long, so Seamus still kept it. Those were the clothes I wore when they granted me the title of Alder Knight. You can take them if you don't mind. The seedlings of yesteryear have grown strong, and with their shade, they shelter the land they know so well. The glories of the past have been passed on, and they shine every, every brighter for it. Ever brighter, maybe, for it. I don't know if that's a grammar thing. They saluted each other, first as knights would, then immediately embraced. Oh, wow, that's so cute. 
In the name of the Gunhilder clan. Wow, it's so cool that they have um Mother's teachings are with me always. These lines just from the outfit. Protecting Mondstadt above all. That's really awesome. That's a lot of that's a lot of detail. Okay, but back to Seamus's page. Good lord. Uh his current duties and responsibilities have been entrusted and handed over to Cardinal Calvin. Alright, who's this? <laughs> um Cardinal and de facto Seneschal of the Church of Favonius, the Seneschal of the Church of Favonius, Seamus Pegg, prior to his departure with Verka, entrusted and turned all of his duties and responsibilities to Cardinal Calvin. This has left the replacement Cardinal swamped with work. According to Barbara, the last time she's seen him in person was when the liar was stolen, distraught by its disappearance. Ah, okay. Well, he didn't show up in the game, but um, okay. Anyway, back to Seamus as he departed for an expedition with Grandma Zerverka. The purpose of the expedition is unknown, but it is related to a dangerous secret from days long past. Ooh boy. <laughs> um, Seamus first appears in Chapter 1 attending the Ludi festivities at Deluxe Manor. When Ildatore and Krupp demand an audience with him, Seamus shows himself. The three of them, as well as Duluk and Kaya, head to the Don Winery's meeting room to talk about the Fatui's desire to recruit people from Mondstadt. Although unwilling to give in to the Fatui's demands, Seamus was unable to find a way to tip negotiations in Mondstadt's favor. While deliberating on their next move, however, Dottore lost interest in Mondstadt after finding another object of greater interest, Deluke's delusion, and ordered his diplomats to withdraw. Seamus, after learning that Dottore had left first, gets drunk and excitedly tells Kaya the news. In game, because Varka's expedition with Seamus is a member of Departed from Mondstadt before the start of the Arkham Quests, Seamus has not made an, a proper appearance in the story. When attempting to retrieve the Holy Liar, uh, Gotteland tells the Traveler that a signed document from the Seneschal is one of the items required to borrow the artifact and has optional dialogue where she mentions that Seamus is away. All right, a seneschal is a senior position filled by a court appointment within a royal, ducal, or noble household during the Middle Ages and early modern period, historically a steward or major domo of a medieval great house. Okay, I knew that, but in case you guys didn't, there it is. Seamus Pegg was originally named Seamus in the manga and Seamus Pegg in the closed beta test versions of Jean and Barbara's character stories. For version 1.0, he was renamed to Simon Page but it was changed back. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, maybe someday we will meet uh, Mr. Seamus in person. But alas, back to <laughs> the original thing. A famous form of venture. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, in time, Rift formed their marriage. A successor. Okay, no, we already read this. This is um, Frederica's stuff. Okay, back to Jean's. No, 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 wait. This is the Gunholder page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whew, we read all this already. All right. Um, all right. Let's go. Is there anything at the bottom here? Um, no. Okay. Let's go back to Jean. <laughs> Jean is the acting grandmaster of the Knights of Vonius. She's always busy handling unrest across Mondstadt and tirelessly working to maintain the city of freedom. Um, all right, these are just her upgrade materials. She is, uh, her birthday is March 14th. Leo Minor is her constellation. Um, invigorating pizza is her favorite dish. That's cute. All right, let's go to um, the lore page. All right, let's start with character stories. Uh, the Knights of Fafonius are the protectors of Mondstadt, the swords and shields of the city. In addition to keeping the city and the surrounding travel routes safe from the threat of wild monsters, the knight's most important responsibility is maintaining order among Mondstadt's inhabitants. Mondstadt is the city of freedom, but unchecked freedom without any kind of rules only invites chaos and anxiety. Jean's understanding of this is the reason she remains diligent at all times, holding herself to impeccable standards. However, she often finds that she exhausts her monthly quota of coffee within the first few days of the month as a result. Wow, okay, she sounds like a hard worker. The Gunhilder clan is the oldest family of knights in Mondstadt, dating back to even before the very first epic was written. 
However, this long and proud lineage can also be a burden. Jean was raised by her mother to be the successor to the Gunhilder clan. She was trained in all the things a knight must know and all the qualities they must exhibit from discipline, etiquette, and conduct to knowledge of history and ballads, as well as maintaining peak swordsmanship and physical fitness. Only by upholding this standard can Jean carry the mantle of the Gunhilder clan, whose motto is for Mondstadt as always. Some time ago, there was a joke commonly told in Mondstadt's taverns. A Gunhilder learns to say for Mondstadt as always before learning to say mommy. Oh, wow. As a child, Jean once lifted her head up from the book she was reading, Breeze Amidst the Forest Ballad Selection, and saw the other children her age happily playing with pinwheels outside the window. The young Jean knew in that moment what her family motto meant to her. Now, when she lifts her head up from her piles of paperwork and sees the next generation of children doing the same thing, acting Grandmaster Jean has no regrets about her years of service to that motto. You have to give your all to do the right thing, always. Master Jean is so reliable. If you ever run into trouble, seek Jean. She'll know what to do. The denizens of Mondstadt, civilians and knights alike, all rely on Jean. If someone needs help for the right reasons, Jean does not hesitate to render assistance. Be it a quarrel down at the market, a relationship issue, no matter how unrelated it may be to a knight's job, Jean gladly lends a hand whenever she can. The chance to help someone in need is reason enough for a knight. To her, her knightly duty takes priority over her role as acting grandmaster. She believes helping others herself is the best way to assist. She holds her fellow knights to the same standard. Lisa the librarian once suggested that Jean take a break and enjoy some afternoon tea, as is befitting of a lady. However, to Jean, doing that which is befitting of a knight takes priority over doing that which is befitting of a lady. Jean is so reliable. Such is the reputation Jean enjoys in Mondstadt. Good lord, this woman works hardcore. Her only gripe is that there are not enough hours in the day. She could never help all of those in need, even by foregoing sleep. The dedication and commitment required to become someone so reliable is unimaginable. <laughs> given, okay, given everything Jean has brought to her role as acting grandmaster, people sometimes forget that there is, in fact, a grandmaster who is her superior. This does not bother her in any way, though. Her role and title within the Knights of Favonius do not affect her work ethic in the slightest. Her passion, honesty, and meticulousness come from two things. One is her education and training, which has instilled in her a chivalrous spirit from a young age. The other is the devoted teachings of Varka, the free-spirited knight of Boreas and grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, currently dispatched on a crusade. The effect the relaxed and unruly knight of Boreas, Varka, has had on Jean's growth has been great. Grandmaster, please take your job seriously. All of Mondstadt looks up to you. Well, you are my second in command, so helping me out is part of your job description. This way, I can focus on the really important things, wouldn't you agree? Oh my gosh. He is the knight of new frontiers and legendary conquests, while she is the knight of maintaining peace and freedom. Jean does not resent Varka. Well, I might. Perhaps there is the wisdom in his conduct. However, what Varka leaves undone falls on her shoulders, and it is then down to her to do the right thing. Half a year ago, Varka led the elite knights of Favonius on yet another expedition away from Mondstadt. An expedition. How typical of Varka's character. I'll leave things here to you. I mean, you basically have been doing my job for years now anyway. Leave it to me, Grandmaster. After seeing the Grandmaster off, Jean sat by the window and thought to herself, Upon your return, I will show you a kinder, more prosperous, and more peaceful Mondstadt. Oh my god. Whew. Okay. The great tree at Windrise is where the first dandelion knight came to the end of her journey. She was Vanessa. You know what? Let's, uh, I know who this is. This is from the manga, but in case you guys are slightly unfamiliar, Vanessa was a hero of Mondstadt who lived around 1,000 years ago during the era when the Mondstadt aristocracy reigned, a flame-touched Muraton. Enslaved by the tyrannical nobles, she served as a gladiator in the Colosseum and became known as the Lion Fang Knight for her undefeated streak. With the help of Barbados and Ragnabinder, among others, Vanessa brought an end to the aristocracy, then established the current city of Mondstadt and the Knights of Favonius, becoming its first Grandmaster and Dandelion Knight. It is said that at her end of her life, she ascended to Celestia at Windrise and took the form of a falcon. Afterwards, she became the Falcon of the West, one of the four winds. I have a theory that uh, she's Deluke's Falcon, but we'll talk more about that in Deluke's video. I'm not going to read through all of this. I will um, most likely read through this during Venti's quest um, and possibly Deluke. I'll mention her there too because I have theories about connections there. 
Um, but yes, I'm going to leave this for another time. But I just wanted to mention her in case you guys weren't as familiar with her or um, hadn't read the manga by chance. So yes, she's a big influence on Jean. Um, the founder of the Knights of Favonius and the restorer of Mondstadt, she bade farewell to the city she had vowed to protect, leaving behind her legend in a single sapling. After centuries of basking in the bliss of the thousand winds, the sapling grew into a towering tree. Jean was conferred the title of Dandelion Knight at age 15, which is insane. The Dandelion Knight is also known as Lion Fang Knight. Passed down through generations of knights, the title is bestowed upon only the most distinguished. On the day she received the title, Jean excused herself from the celebrations that followed the conferment ceremony. As if following in the footsteps of her childhood hero, she went and stood before the great tree. The title of Dandelion Knight symbolizes Vanessa's legacy of resistance and benevolence. So how, Jean thought, could one such as herself be worthy of this honorable title? More than a millennium had passed since Mondstadt's restoration. Did she really have what it would take to continue to protect this ancient and proud land of freedom? Beneath her outwardly mature visage lay the heart of a young girl, who had only just received the title and remained wholly unprepared for the task that lay before her. The wind blew from far away, and she felt it flow within her as it gently whisked away her doubts and worries, leaving her with an unwavering determination. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, Jean really, she comes from a long line of strong women, doesn't she? For Mondstadt, as always, to become a warrior as kind and as determined as Vanessa and to fight for her people and for freedom, yes, this was the true meaning of her simple family motto. To this day, whenever Jean feels wary or feels herself beginning to waver, she comes and stands before this tree and lets the wind console her once more. It carries away her fatigue so that she may once more have the strength to carry on. The great tree at Windrise marked the end of the first Lion Fang Knight's journey. So too does it mark the beginning of Jean's. Master Jean has a secret. The Gunholder clan is a venerable knightly house. This prideful blood comes from Jean's mother, Frederica. Jean's father, on the other hand, is Seamus Pegg, an adventurer famed throughout the continent. When he came to Mondstadt, he dusted off his past self and started anew with the Church of Favonius and ascended to high office within it, becoming known as the Cardinal of Daybreak. The two lovers eventually parted ways. Young Jean, holding her mother's hand, would watch the silhouettes of her father and her sister Barbara grow ever more distant. Later, Barbara would follow in her father's footsteps and join the Church of Favonius, becoming a deaconess much beloved by the people. Jean has always wanted to get closer to her younger sister by blood, but cannot bring herself to say anything when faced with Barbara's evasive eyes. Perhaps this all too similar awkwardness is a sign that the sentiment is shared. Master Jean has yet another secret. No matter how many times she has read the historical classics, despite her title of Dandelion Knight, and though she has become the acting grandmaster whom everyone relies on, Jean still loves romance novels. This is not for the years as a young girl that she missed amid her training and duties or due to the rift that formed in her parents' marriage. Jean simply yearns for the mutual attraction spoken of in such stories, for those emotions as subtle and fragile as spider silk. As a knight, she must put Mondstadt and the Knights of Favonius first, but if I too could, in her office deep at night, Jean once again finishes reading Vera's Melancholy. If I have the time, it should be fine to go to Cape Oath just before daybreak, right? Lowering her head, Jean peeks out of her window at the glittering stars above. Aw, so she's a secret romantic. This schedule is accurate down to the minute. From a morning run with Amber, followed a breakfast trip with Lisa on the way, to doing her own laundry by hand and settling her own change of clothes at night, all things great and small pack Jean's schedule rather tightly. Every completed item is ticked off, while ones delayed due to external factors list the detailed whys and wherefores. Next to the item Mondstadt Public Facilities Review, delayed due to bout of illness, is written the following, completed at 3 a.m., end of month book purchase award is canceled. Jean sometimes thinks that inspiration for this schedule may have been the training program her mother drew up for her 10 years ago. Good God. If one were to go by skill alone, Jean has long become one of the best swordsmen in Mondstadt. But in Jean's heart, she would rather be a shield that defends freedom and song than a sword that cuts through corruption and darkness. Protecting has always been a tougher task than destroying. Very true. Around the time when she was promoted from captain of her squad to master of the knights, a huge challenge stood before her. From without, the Fatui exerted diplomatic pressure, and from within, there were traitors, comrades of the former inspector. 
regrouping and finding a way to break through was no easy task. Okay, wait, I think I know who this is. Okay, yes, Aroch. Uh, this is one of the villains from the manga. Um, after Krapus was killed as a result of using his delusion to stop Ursa the Drake from killing his son Deluke, Aroch ordered Deluc to cover the incident up to protect the knight's reputation. Deluc was enraged at this order and promptly left the knights and set out to uncover the truth himself. Aroch subsequently took the credit for Ursa and the Drake's defeat for himself. However, Jean discovered his scheme and reported to Barca, who conferred her with the authority to punish Aroch as she saw fit. When Deluc returned four years later from his investigation, he learned that Aroch had been discharged as a traitor. Aroch's status is currently unknown. And although his allies continue to attempt to subvert the Knights of Favonius from within. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see him again at some point in the game. But anyway, regrouping and finding a way to break through was no easy task, but Jean was able to fend off the external pressure with one hand and lead the Knights to smash the many plots of the Abyss Order with the other, reestablishing the authority of the Knights of Favonius. Jean will never forget the moment she received her vision. At that moment, all seemed to grow quiet as she felt the breeze flow through her hand. The world seemed to fade away, save for the time-honored motto of the House of Gunhilder, for Mondstadt as always. Oh boy, wow. Okay, so we are going to be looking at, uh, we're not gonna be looking at the other character stories. We're gonna be solely uh, listening to these. So let's start with Albedo. Barbara, she's a very earnest deaconess. I once had the opportunity to sketch her a simple portrait. What happened to the sketch? <sighs> yes. Albert offered to purchase it, but I rejected his bid and gave it to the acting grandmaster. Social relations really require a lot of effort. It's so weird to hear them in uh, English, but who is Albert? What the fuck? This is a grown man. Uh, diehard fan of Barbara. What the fuck? This is a grown man. That's uncomfortable as hell. Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, about Jean. Jean? She has served exceptionally well as acting Grandmaster. One can even say she is more reliable than Grandmaster Varka. Perhaps in our hearts, we all eagerly await the day she can become the official Grandmaster herself. Okay. Uh, so he likes her. I don't know anything about Albedo, so... Jean will be upset if she catches us lazing around like this. Okay, Klee... Klee? She can be a bit cheeky sometimes, but everyone in the Knights of Favonius likes her. Although, I really ought to keep a closer eye on her if I want to keep her from getting put in confinement by Jean again. Oh, okay, so it mentions any any line with Jean. Jean makes the most amazing cup of coffee. You'll have to try it sometime. Okay. Jean might still be working? We should invite her for coffee. Let's go. <laughs> what is this one? I joined the Knights because of my grandpa. I stayed because of Jean. And now you're the one that showed me the world beyond Mondstadt. I couldn't be happier. All right. It's so weird hearing them in English. It's so weird. Acting Grandmaster, leader of the Knights of Favonius. Everyone seems to like her a lot. Oh, me? I, of course I have nothing but admiration for her. Okay. What about Benny? I keep meaning to ask Master Jean for some help with the Mondstadt Adventurers Guild, but I don't know how to go about it. The guild doesn't have as many rules or regulations as the Knights of Avonius. The dads and I are pretty laid back about everything. Dads? Pretty sure that attitude wouldn't fly with Jean, though. I guess I should read up on the Knights' etiquette or something? I can tell that's a woman. But dads? He has dads? Wait. What? Like... Gay dads? Like dads? Like what does this mean? The dads? <laughs> what? He has dads? Plural? Okay, I guess we'll find more about that later, uh, Deluc. Trifling matters can become Jean's greatest enemy. Okay, I don't mind Deluc's English voice. Okay, okay, okay. Her unparalleled sense of responsibility is the sole reason why she still hasn't found her true calling. Oh. That's interesting. He's almost saying that like her responsibility is holding her back from her true calling. 
That is very interesting. Hmm, Deluxe very insightful, if private, so I wonder what that means. Ah, acting Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, a rare mature adult who doesn't drink. But perhaps a little too earnest. Because is it just me? Or are the knights overdoing it a bit on protecting me, hmm? Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about Diana. Eula, is that how you say it? Good. With this much power, I dare say even the acting Grandmaster herself would be no match for me. Whoa. Whoa. Let's cool it. Let's cool it on that. What the heck? Um, about I don't to... get along with some of the knights. And he doesn't think much of them in general. So you'd think that would make us allies. <sighs> but the way he always acts so aloof. <laughs> He's even worse than acting Grandmaster Jean. What? I want nothing to do with him. Jean isn't aloof at all. She's just hardworking. What the fuck? I don't like this character so far. The acting Grandmaster's family and mine are sworn enemies. Oh. But she draws a clear line between professional and personal matters. She saw I was capable, admitted me into the Knights, and gave me lots of opportunities. So... When the time comes for vengeance, what? I'll afford her a reasonably soft landing. Vengeance? What the fuck? What? Vengeance? Okay, I do not like this character. There better, there better be some explanation for all that nonsense once we get to her story quest. <laughs> Kaya. Okay, what does he have to say? Uh, This isn't about Jean, though. What? The acting Grandmaster? You need to give her your full support. <laughs> I love his what? <laughs> okay, well, we, we read this one about Klee last video, but... Klee. Seems she has failed to elude the acting Grandmaster's investigative skills. Despite the pointers I gave her. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no need to go reporting me or anything. Oh my gosh, I like his English voice. I was too. entrusted by the acting Grandmaster to work in the background to support Noelle. There hasn't been much for me to concern myself with. She has a good head on her shoulders. Quite the relief. <laughs> How on brand for me to love the Ragbros English voices, too. Um, you already read these uh, last video. My last character quest video was Cleese. So we already know all these things. Um, all right, Lisa. Oh, good morning, Jean. Oh, it's you. Sorry, dear. What? <laughs> she mistaked us for Jean? Jean is a gifted and dedicated leader. Seeing how hard she works makes even me want to help her out. Okay. This is sus, Lisa, but she's a sussy, sussy person. What about Mona? You mean the acting grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius? Her constellation is Leo Minor, which represents strength and responsibility shouldered too young. Though the lioness has been separated from her pride for a long time, she grows from strength to strength, and the day will come when she is ready to return as its glorious leader. Okay, that was vague and ominous, but I'm gathering that that's Mona's personality, because she had something similar to say about Klee, and she talked about Klee's constellation as well. Oh wow, Ning Guang has a thing about Jean? The acting Grandmaster of Mondstadt, a strict and impeccable woman her flawless etiquette knows no fault even her letters are meticulously written increased according to the prescribed rules <laughs> it is such easily overlooked details that offer a glimpse into the true qualities of one's character she is a cool voice actress master jean has always been my role model both in terms of ability and dedication she holds herself and others to the same high standards so if there ever comes a day when I meet with her approval, it will be the ultimate acknowledgement of all my efforts so far. Until then, there's no room for complacency. Okay, that makes sense that Noelle looks up to her. Um, okay, I don't think we need to listen to her line about Cleo. She's not only competent in her own work, but also somehow manages to clear up various matters for others. <laughs> Now that's a woman who deserves admiration. <laughs> Rosaria, showing the respect, okay. I don't dare talk to Master Jean that much. Because she's so strict. 
I know she's a good person and all. I know that, I do. But I still find her scary. I don't tend to bother her. And even when I have to, I ask Albedo to go on my behalf. <laughs> okay. Toma. Oh? So Jean from the Gunhilder clan is the master of the Knights of Vivonius now? She definitely deserves it. She's known all over for her impeccable conduct. Uh, oh, just the acting Grandmaster? <laughs> well, someone of her standing won't care about titles. Okay, okay. Interesting. Hi, Mom finds Ooh. that hard work hardly works here in Mondstadt. Okay. Why do you say that? Oh! Just look at Huffman. It's from Aether. the Knights of Favonius. He does his best at his duties every day. But the ever-relaxed Captain Kaya is his Hey, boss. no hating on Kaya. Hmm, but isn't Jean who works the hardest the acting Grandmaster? Well, how about this then? Venti's the god of Mondstadt, and he's the laziest of them all. Hmm. Paimon's so judgy. What's the second if one? If one hilly churl oh. could beat, say, three wild boars, then how many hilly churls would say it take hilly to reach churl? the fighting prowess hilly of churl? Master Jean and Master Diluc? Not sure, but if you heard the way everyone talks in Mondstadt, you'd know that Master Jean is the strongest. I'd say that if Diluc strikes first, Master Jean wouldn't be able to counter. <laughs> oh, she'd find a way. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Master Jean's elemental burst is really strong, you know. Yes, but that field would also make Diluc stronger. <laughs> Paimon doesn't think Master Jean would even need her vision to take on Master Diluc because... Diluc would only need a beginner's <laughs> Traveler's sword to... Diluc simp. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> <sighs> this is so dumb. <laughs> They I've both never fight felt closer Mondstadt, to Plumine so than blows. this moment. <laughs> That's why Paimon likes your idea of measuring their fighting strength in number of hilly churls. Or, in Paimon's case, in fifths of a wild boar. What? Ooh. Jean is mentioned here? Inazuma's scenery is quite different than what we've seen so far. Yeah, Inazuma's an island nation. In the boats, how did the people living on different islands communicate with one another? According to Yoimiya's dad, they probably use smoke signals to transmit information. Or they would... Yeah? They would commission people who could freeze the water surface to travel between the islands and deliver messages. That's bullshit. Yeah. No way. If Kaya had lived in Inazuma back then, he would have been even <laughs> busier than Master Jean now. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Please. Kaya would hate that. He'd never want to do that shit. <laughs> Alright, Venti has something to say. Acting Grand Master Jean. Well, what do you think of her? <laughs> yes, I couldn't agree more. Conscientious, courageous, kind and considerate too. <sighs> Reminds me of another good friend. That sounds like a, a woman voicing him as well. Uh, but that's interesting. Another good friend. I wonder who he means. If that's Vanessa or something else. I want to dig deeper into that, but I'm going to wait till Venti's character quest in order to do that. Um, okay, this is just extra stuff from the manga. Okay. Okay, so we are going to be going into the voiceovers category now and just listening to all of these. I am Jean, the Dandelion Knight, requesting approval to join your party. From this day onwards, my honor and loyalty lie with you. Okay. It's time to move on. We shouldn't stay here. I do hope the Knights of Favonius are all working hard. Onwards, we have work to do. The rain won't slow me down. This weather is perfect. We should move out. Huh. Snow. <laughs> she Remember, doesn't like snow, I guess. Remember, boots when we return. <laughs> Such fine weather. Legend has it, the wind was unusually strong on that day, too. Hmm. A successful day starts from the morning. Let's give it our all today. We've still got work to do. Let's keep going. 
It seems I'm immune to coffee now. <laughs> Perhaps I need to ask Lisa for something a little stronger. Oh, Lord. I don't know what that could possibly mean. Training is finished for today. Great work. You've earned a good rest. Today, I had no choice but to cut down five ruin guards to protect the people of our city. Oh. I must continue to work harder. Though hostile, destroying such precious artifacts is still a loss to us all. Hmm. I must find a less destructive way to bring them down next time. Interesting. She views them as artifacts, precious artifacts. You have my complete and full support. Of course, if your path ever deviates from justice, I will not hesitate to point it out. All right. <laughs> I swear by this sword, victory shall be yours. Our work will not handle itself, but I suppose the occasional short break is warranted. Let us rest for a couple of minutes. For Mondstadt, as always, is the Gunhilder family motto. Every time I use my vision, I am reminded of my mother and the hopes of the people of Mondstadt. For Mondstadt, for freedom, that is what I fight for. Got a Captain America vibes. On behalf of the Knights of Favonius, I would like to extend my gratitude to you for all you have done for Mondstadt. Please remember to rest from time to time. Did I miss something? What are you laughing at? Did I say something odd? <laughs> dandelion, dandelion, ride the wind to a faraway land. Who knows? The wind might take it all the way to Celestia. Oh, well, who knows? <laughs> Barbara is a hard worker, but I feel she's too hard on herself sometimes. What? You ask me how I know all of this? It's because the Order also manages the church. Oh, I didn't know that. When Lisa is around, I always have peace of mind. Oh, that's sweet. I must say that Amber's development has impressed me recently. I hope that one day her deeds will become the words of a bard's tale. Oh, that's sweet. Is that's that fine. right? Kaya also gave you some suggestions. He is an excellent knight after all. This is a fact no one can deny. They have a cute friendship. Though it may be said that it is in a child's nature to play, the things Klee plays with are far from toys. I can never take my eye off her. Sometimes I feel that terms like genius were originally created for Albedo. Uh, 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 wait. Sometimes I feel that terms like genius were originally created for Albedo. Albedo? Isn't it Albedo? Or have I been saying that wrong? Albedo or Albedo? <laughs> what? Albedo sounds so wrong. I'm assuming it's Albedo, but she said Albedo. Help. Help. What does this mean? Albedo? Albedo? Grandmaster Varka is the legend of his generation. On the day of his triumphant return, I shall be sure to personally introduce you to him. I'm sure you too will be in awe of his greatness. We'll see. We'll see. I have high standards. Hmm. Noelle. She puts enormous effort into trying to become a Knight of Favonius. However, I fear she is not quite ready for the dangers that lie beyond Mondstadt's walls. Well, she did well enough protecting me. <laughs> Some may see Sister Rosaria as one who complains about how bothersome her work is, but she does her job well. Last time I saw her, I told her she could come find me should she ever need help, to which she simply replied that doing so would be even more bothersome. I need to work harder to become of more assistance to the people of Mondstadt. Good lord, Jean. Wow. Master D. Luke has his reasons for being so critical of the Knights of Favonius. I am not proud of the way things went, but I cannot change the past. All I can do is keep working hard, in the hope he may one day see us in a better light. This is my duty. Hmm, good luck with that. <laughs> Master D. Luke is my senior, and I have the utmost respect for him. Though we have gone separate ways, I can sense we share the same strong commitment to protecting Mondstadt at all costs. This is very true. I agree with that 100%. All right, let's see what uh, Sucrose has Sucrose to say. Sucrose is also a rare talent in or the field of alchemy. Or what she has to say about Sucrose. Under Albedo's mentorship, she is sure to flourish. I'm sure her future will be bright. The only thing is... Uh, oh, uh, I was momentarily lost in thought. It is nothing. Nothing bad, anyway. 
Okay, so she said Albedo this time. Her voice sounds slightly different. Is this a different actress? Yula? Um, please do not hold her unfortunate background against her. The Knights of Favonius evaluate each person impartially. Eula has a clear sense of right and wrong and is more talented than most. The controversial statements that she makes from time to time are just a product of her personality. Uh, for instance, she always mentions wanting to challenge me, but I don't mind. I would fucking mind. <laughs> no one should have an attitude for no reason. I don't care who you are. I don't care what status you have. Dang. The Grand Master placed Mika on the front line of the expedition team, not simply because he met the requirements of the mission. More importantly, he was impressed by Mika's hardworking and grounded nature. From my own perspective, I feel very honored to work with someone like him. Okay, now we're going to be moving on to more about Jean. I shoulder the Knight's trust and the people's hope. It is for this reason I must stay vigilant. Alrighty. Vanessa's title, Dandelion Knight, has been passed down from generation to generation. Countless great knights were awarded with this honor, and I will not bring shame to this name. Thus, I must keep going. I must become the sword and aegis of the people. Wow. Okay. Very ambitious. Very lofty. Only glorious victories are recorded in legends and history books. Surely even the great knights of old must have had their struggles. Wind, please show me the path. Okay. When I'm wholeheartedly devoted to my work, all of my troubles and even my sense of time seem to just slip away. Hmm. Grandmaster Varka did say to me, Jean, there is no better candidate for this task. I feel like he's... We'll talk about it later. <laughs> as I walk with you, the path ahead becomes clearer. It's almost as if I have finally found someone I can trust. I wonder if... No, this must mean that I'm still lacking in strength. Oh my god. I must not give up. I will not. I cannot fail the knights and the people of Mondstadt. Still, thank it's you. It's not weakness to rely on people, Jean. <laughs> Maybe we can discuss the tales of legendary heroes. Have you heard the story of the heroic king of Pinria? What? Isn't it Conria, or am I stupid? But what heroic king? Can you elaborate on this, G? What? What, 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 what? Maybe when I read, do a video on all the books, uh, I'll learn about that. If only there was some kind of mysterious potion that could keep me awake forever. I need to have a talk with Lisa tomorrow. I don't think that exists, honey. It's been ages since I had pizza at Cat's Tail. If only they delivered. <laughs> a true knight can't afford to be a picky eater. Not only is the taste magnificent, but you've also made sure it was healthy. You have my gratitude. Hmm. Yes, I feel a lot more energetic now, thanks to you. Uh, uh, all in all, I appreciate the effort. All right, let's read the birthday thingy. Birthday wishes. Today is a day worth celebrating. If you must ask why, well, let me remind you that today is when you, the one who is blessed by the wind, came into the world. Since this is your birthday, I'll allow you to take it easy. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Uh, please forgive my presumptuousness. I hope this gift is to your liking. Well, that was sweet. Good. On to our next objective. Okay. <laughs> As the wind continues to blow, so too shall I continue to fight. Although we have peace, we must not become complacent. As the acting Grand Master, I must remain vigilant. I think you are. I am still not good enough. Lord. Ever since I met you, I have been indebted to you for your assistance. My gratitude. Wind, please forgive my selfishness. Not as the acting Grand Master, but as Jean. I hereby swear that my sword shall always go with you. Listen, if she was my actual friend IRL, I'd be giving her talking to so much. <laughs> it was one! Ha! Ha! Okay. <laughs> Alright. What a pleasant surprise. Hmm. 
Things are going a little too smoothly today. She's always. I hope the others find some. She's always waiting for the uh, worst case scenario. I'm, I'm fine. My companions need me. I cannot give up. You're injured. Get to safety. I'll take over. Monstat. Everyone has their limits. Oh, I have failed. Okay. I'm just playing these in case you guys want to hear We may leave them. at any time. Uh, okay. I think... I don't think we need to listen to the jumping sounds. <laughs> okay, cool. Sick. Let's, um, go ahead and, uh... We already looked at this earlier, didn't we? Yes, she has the... Oh, the three outfits, okay. Let's look at her teapot dialogue and see what Miss Jean has to say after we uh, have companionship leveled with her. All right, here we go. Let the wind lead. It is very comfortable here. The air is fresh and the environment is restful. It is also very quiet. I think I will be able to concentrate and get a lot of work done here. Hmm? Is that not all right? Thank you. I'll be sure to keep your suggestion firmly in mind. Of course, it's always a pleasure to be in your company. Is there a particular topic that you wish to discuss? Anything except oh, work, I love <laughs> Evidently, I talk about work so much that it gets quite exasperating for the people around me. I will think on this. I... I am sorry. I understand. You mean to say that we should be more informal in the way we interact with each other. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, she can sing? Uh, only a few simple songs. She did sing us happy birthday, I guess. It's really nothing to brag about. I want to hear you sing. Oh. Uh, um, but I'm completely unprepared. At the very least, let me practice first. Oh, she's shy. Uh, okay, I, uh, I will do my best. Um, okay, this is higher friendship level. Perhaps you could join me for a walk? I have taken what you said recently to heart and tried to make a few adjustments in my life. Of course, I still push myself to complete my work when performing my official duties. But when I'm with you, I'm now able to unwind. Aw, that's sweet. This is all thanks to you. This whole time, you have been a great companion to me. You are always so considerate of my circumstances. It would be shameful if I didn't at least recognize this much. So thank you. Truly. Dang, you look beautiful when you smile. <laughs> the traveler pulling on the moose. Uh, um, <laughs> we should walk while we talk. I still have so much I want to say to you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good morning. I wish you a successful journey. If there is anything I can assist with, please do not hesitate to ask. Good night, as you often remind me yourself. Okay. Well, that's cute. So here are the special dialogue options for the sets. I never sets. thought that such a perfect study could exist outside the Knights of Favonius headquarters. I would certainly feel at ease here, whether it be while reading or working. Thank you, honorary knight. I am very satisfied. Whenever I go for a stroll around Mondstadt and see the citizens happy and free, I feel deeply inspired. The knights perform our duty precisely so that the city's residents may live in peace. The atmosphere in this park is excellent. Thank you. Alrighty, so I think that is all Jean Wiki has to offer us. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be honest. I don't think there are a whole lot of theories revolving around Jean, but I do know that there are a lot of connections between Jean, her mother, her lineage, and the past, um, especially big events in Mondstadt's history, like the whole uprising that happened, that the Ragnavinder clan, the Gunhilder clan, um, Venti, uh, Vanessa, like all of those, all of those characters um, came together to 
do the impossible and overthrow the cruel aristocracy. I think it'll be interesting to see once we, like one of my overarching theories is that we'll probably be coming back to Mondstadt at some point. Like I think closer to maybe the end, like after we've gone to all the other nations, I feel like we're gonna circle back to Mondstadt and there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff revealed about maybe old Mondstadt or some sort of connection that old Mondstadt had, maybe to Cabrian with um, some of the Conria stuff. I don't know, there's just like, it's sus, you know what I mean? And I don't think Jean maybe has specific ties, but I think she and her family ties back to a time that might have had significant effect on either Tavot, um, depending on how big of a connection Monset has to Conria, um, and possibly Celestia. So I'm very excited to get to all that stuff. Again, I know it's not directly related to Jean, but she might like her ancestors play a huge role in um, what's to come, the climax uh, uh, of um, Tevat's story. Those are my thoughts on theories. Again, not super, not super in depth, but I think Jean is on the cusp of the iceberg. You know, like she's on the very tip. I feel like the iceberg is really deep, but Jean sits on the very top. Hopefully, we see more of Jean. On to the character log. <laughs> Okay, so Jean, Miss Jean, Jean Gunhilder. What an epic name. I think she's really cool. And I think I can relate to her in the sense that her like drive to continuously be better, um, to push herself, her perfectionism is something I relate to on a very deep level. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, I guess there have been some points in my life where I've pushed myself to the point of sickness or being unwell, but Jean seems to take that to a whole nother level. <laughs> um, and she shoulders a lot more responsibility than I am in my little life. Uh, but yeah, I think I can relate to her in that sense where I get that need to prove yourself, to constantly want to do better. Like you feel like you're constantly catching up with expectations and she's putting she's comparing herself to Vanessa and kind of idolizing her well not kind of very much idolizing her and her accomplishments and I think Jean should remember sometimes that Vanessa was a human too and she wasn't always perfect and she did accomplish these great things but it wasn't like she was <laughs> doing all these insane deeds every day Jean really pushes herself to you know like help everybody do everything. And I think delegating is something I hope to see from her in the future, not because I don't think she can handle it, uh, but I think it would just be a good lesson for her to lean on others, especially when she needs um, to take care of herself a little bit, uh, because pushing yourself to the point of, you know, incapacitating yourself is never a good thing. You know, it's you're, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping the other people you're trying to help. So it all just is a lose lose. So hopefully in the future, she learns that, you know, relying on people isn't weakness. Um, not being there for everybody 24 seven is also not a weakness. It's just simply being, it's just simply being human. Um, I think her mother probably had a huge part in this mindset as well, because her mother raised her separate from Barbara with no influence from her father. Um, Barbara seems to be slightly different personality uh, than Jean. I think she still holds herself to certain personal standards, but I think she's a little more forgiving of herself, a little more lax in um, her ambitions, not that she's unambitious or, you know, she's the deaconess, but I don't think there is that same, it's not self punishing. I guess Jean is kind of punishes herself a lot, but that's not present in Barbara. And I wonder if maybe that's just the difference in their parents and um, how their parents chose to raise them because her mother seemed very strict in instilling this idea in Jean at a very young age this is your responsibility. This is who you are. You cannot be anything but this. You know, I'm not saying her mother maybe didn't love her, but I do think that there was a strong hand in shaping Jean as a young lady and then as a woman that she is today. Um, and I think Jean enjoys what she does. I think she believes in what she does. I just think that 
the pressures she probably puts on herself originate from her mother and her mother's influence and having to constantly live up to what her mother expected of her and then her mother's voice just kind of turned in her into her own voice in her head is uh, probably where that how that kind of happened because that's how it happens in real life right when you have really strict parents that expect a lot of you when they have a huge hand in trying to shape who you turn out to be um, more so than just letting you kind of grow up on your own and experience things yourself they really try to dictate your experiences um, and that can have really negative effects on people and some positive effects but I think with Jean she just takes it in stride because it's just her responsibility you know she's the heiress of her clan and um, I think she also wants to be like Vanessa she wants to be seen not because she's selfish or I think she wants admiration or anything but I think she just wants to do good it, it feels good to help people it feels good to be needed it feels good to to protect others at least I think so um so I can I related to her on that sense too where she identified more as the dandelion knight rather than the lion fang knight and I think that was her taking ownership of her life in a way um because I'm again, I'm not saying her mother was evil or anything because it seemed that Jean did have a close relationship with her mother and apparently their parents are still alive. So I don't know where Frederica is, um, if she still lives in Mondstadt or if she's somewhere else. Um, I know Seamus is on the exp expedition with Varka, but I'm not sure where Frederica is or how much contact they have nowadays. Um, but it seems that Jean deciding I identify more with the Dandelion Knight over the Lion of Fang was kind of cool. It was like a little moment. And if you're not really reading into it, you kind of miss it. But I think that was her just claiming her life for herself and saying, you know what? No, this this is what I want to do. I want to be more of a protector. I want to be more of someone who shields like that was in her voice lines as well like I want to be the shield I would rather be a shield than a, a knife or a sword I'd rather protect than go out and you know destroy um, even in the name of justice or whatever so I think that was nice it was like a nice moment um, and again it was really small <laughs> and if you don't read all the character voice lines you kind of miss it but I think it was a, a moment for her where she really took ownership of her life and herself and say, you know what, I identify as this. This is how I am going to be choosing to live my life and what I want to do for the people of Mondstadt. Um, her relationships are very interesting. I did not know she was Barbara's sister. I don't know if that's revealed in a, in a event, sorry, um, in an event, or if that's something we would just have to learn like through character lines. Um, but it makes a lot of sense, you know? I think her relationship with Barbara, they seem very distant. And I wonder if maybe that will change in the events that we I'll be watching. Um, or if it kind of they kind of have this like <laughs> unspoken middle ground where they kind of wanna both reach out, but they don't know they have that same bashfulness in being vulnerable or opening up to other people. They're not really sure um, how to take the first step. Um, and so maybe we'll see more development uh, between them in an event or in future quests. I'm not sure. Uh, it was really cool <laughs> to see um, all the characters kind of make cameos in this quest um, and just kind of get a, an idea of how closely Jean is tied to the community and not just like playable characters like Deluke or Kaya or Venti, um, Amber or Lisa, but the actual citizens of Mondstadt because it says in her character lines, oh, the denizens of Mondstadt all rely on Jean. But this quest really showed us step by step, <laughs> painstakingly, uh, what she does for everybody in town, how many people feel comfortable asking for her help. Like Margaret literally just stomped up to the Knights of Favonius headquarters and was about to march into Jean's office and be like, help me find my cat. Like there's clearly not a lack of decorum, but there's no hesitance in um, asking for for Jean's help, even uh, about the smallest matters. So Jean either has really put herself forward um, in the past or created this image of accessibility um, that I think is really interesting. There's not, you know, for someone who is the acting grandmaster, 
Um, it sounds very formal and very uptight. And people say she's strict, but she's still approachable enough um, to the people of Mondstadt where they feel comfortable in directly coming to her for help instead of asking the other knights first for assistance. They just go straight to Jean. Um, so that's that was an interesting thing to point out as well. Um, in terms of an arc, I think that... Again, it'll be interesting to see from point A to point B, B being the kind of the end of Tevat's storyline. Um, if there's going to be any major role she'll play, if we circle back to Mondstadt maybe in the future, like I talked about in my in the theory bit of the video, I wonder if we'll see her kind of work together with Deluke again and Kaya and all the other citizens of Mondstadt to come together and uh, assist the traveler in maybe some some final battle or <laughs> a send off or something um, because her family was directly tied to the events that happened in Old Mondstadt and the liberation of Old Mondstadt um, and the destruction of the aristocracy and all that stuff with the Cabrians. So yeah, it'll be very interesting. In her um, in her lore, it mentioned that her family, like her original ancestors, uh, called out to a wind spirit. And um, I just, I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm not really sure what that means, but Venti is the Archon of the Winds <laughs> uh, of Animo. So I'm going to keep that in mind, the wind spirit. I'm going to keep that in mind. That will, that will probably come into play at some point. Um, but yes, I hope to see Jean in the future. Of course I do. Uh, I, I know some people I've read up that some people struggle to connect to this character, um, because she's like, oh, she's her whole personality is that she's hardworking. And I think that's true that it's a big part of who she is and what she prioritizes. But I think it'd be undercutting her as a character to say, oh, well, she's only this thing because reading up on her lore and her past and her relationship with her mother. And there's there's a genuine, sincere place of goodness where all that all that drive is coming from. It's not just her like being that way to be annoying. <laughs> she's she's doing all this because she feels compelled to that she feels she's expected to be this way um and that she wants to do right by Mondstadt and um the history of her family although her family wasn't in wasn't one of the evil uh ones part of the aristocracy she still maybe feels generational guilt I don't know maybe she feels like I it's my responsibility my ancestors did this I'm gonna do this too it's my job um and there's honor in that so, but I also think it's interesting uh, that Deluke mentioned as well, like in the voice lines that, you know, her, her sense of responsibility holds her back. And I think that was kind of addressed in um, her quest uh, where, again, her claiming, I, f I identify more as the Dandelion Knight than I do the Lion Fang, um, just helped clarify and get some understanding a little bit. Um, but yeah, I wonder I wonder if that line <laughs> will come into play later because um, him and Jean seemed to have some history in the sense that they, I'm assuming they grew up together um, and they both were in the Knights, so uh, Knights of Favonia. So I'm assuming they trained together along with Kaya, um, even though Deluke is older than Jean. Uh, she she still treats him with a very big, <laughs> a very big helping of respect. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I think it'll be interesting to see how all those all those little loose ends uh, maybe leak into future into future storylines or um, in other other character lore. That will be it will be very cool. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you did, I very much appreciate you spending your time with me. I apologize when I recorded this um, before. My I was I was actually really sick, and I was going to record um, like the character log and all the reading stuff too. But I figured, you know what? Who's going to want to listen to me like struggling to read through all these lines when my voice is like cracking and breaking every other sentence? So I waited a day when I like originally recorded. I waited a day. 
and um, my voice recovered enough where I could talk and it didn't sound like I was croaking every sentence. Um, so again, I apologize for all of that. I did once again um, use, I had to go back and re-record my screen um, of the wiki <laughs> because uh, I didn't do it the first, when I originally recorded, I was just recording my voice because I thought I was gonna be like voicing over like, I don't know, random footage. Uh, but I've changed my mind in the last video and I think I'm just gonna continue doing that because I saw in the comments in the last video that some of you were appreciative of me putting up the actual um, character paragraphs and stuff. So I kept that in. And I also, <laughs> I also uh, made sure to use the um, actual VA uh, recordings of the voice lines this time. I had originally spoken them out loud, um, but I just deleted that audio, uh, the original audio, and just let the characters speak for themselves. Um, and I tried to like slip in my little commentary between um, voice lines. So uh, some of it was just a little mismatched, a little, a little uh, patched up. Um, so I hope it wasn't uh, too distracting, but Yes, thank you again. I hope you had a, a fun time looking into all the stuff about Jean. I can't wait to see you in the next one.